Hello there, my name's Scott. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Touchwood, which I received from www.touchwoode6.com. That's touchwood-e6.com. Before I start, I must point out you receive a free of charge for the purpose of conducting a review. My opinion on the product remains true, honest, and accurate. As always, okay, let's go straight ahead and show you in a bit more detail. Okay, so the guy who makes the uh, Touchwood, he makes them by hand and uh, he makes them out of re, uh, reclaimed hardwood. Now this particular one is made out of a wood called Jara, or possibly pronounced Jara, I'm not too sure. And um, in its former life, uh, this was actually part of a Australian outback uh, railway sleeper. Uh, and this, uh, the Jara, or Jara, is also known as Australian mahogany. Uh, now it's made up of sort of four main parts. You have like the main body, then you have like the, uh, the base section, uh, then a false battery, and a, a brass nut. Now it can be used at either six volts or three volts. And if you want to use it at three volts, then you'd use it along with the um, the false battery. If you want to vape at six volts, you just use two uh, CR123 batteries. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll quickly assemble it and then I'll show you in a little bit more detail when it's fully assembled. And at the bottom here, you have one side which um, has got a spring in it and the other side which hasn't. So if you're, I'm gonna be using this at three, uh, uh, 3 volts or 3.6 volts in this case. So the uh, the battery would go into the side that has got the spring and you make sure you place the uh, negative end in first. So you can see it's uh, sprung loaded there. And then take your false battery and place that in the other side. Uh, now on the base here you can see that it has like a, like a metal sort of or a brass oblong shape and that is to help uh, prevent the actual base from sort of spinning around when it's all sort of connected. And you make sure that the uh, the spring side goes against the false battery. So that just slides down there, and you push that into place. Then you get your brass nut, and just literally screw that onto the top. And it uses a 510 connection, which does look like it's been sealed. So if you like to sort of direct drip, then hopefully uh, you know you won't uh, have any problems. <laughs> and then you get your, um, well in this case I'm going to be using a 510 uh, Bogue cartomizer. And then you just screw that into the top. And then when you want to activate it, you just press another down the button. Uh, looks wise, I think it looks you know, absolutely fantastic. Uh, I really do like the uh, the wood and uh, the very, very nice brass. The brass does sort of dull after a little while, but you know, if you've got a Cape Cod uh, polishing cloth, literally spend sort of 10 seconds and you can get that you know, looking all nice and shiny again. You have a little bit of brass detail in here as well. And also around the, uh, uh, the top of the, uh, the switch on the button and I'll see the, uh, the brass nut as well there. And um, you know, it's got a really nice sort of oldie weldy sort of look to it. You know, I can well imagine, you know, if vaping had been invented like you know, a couple of hundred years ago, uh, you could uh, well imagine sort of, you know, somebody like Captain Cook on his ship and he'll be vaping something that would look exactly like this. And um, you know, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And very well made as well. I mean, like the wood is flawless. I've not had any sort of splinters or anything like that. It does also come with uh, two, uh, air vents there as well so just in case you have got a, a slightly dodgy battery in there then obviously the gases have got some way to escape um, so um, well let's go and see what it actually vapes like okay so that is the uh, the touch wood so what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and show you what it actually uh, vapes like I'm going to be using it with a 510 low resistance uh, Bogue cartomizer which I've filled with some 18 milligram strength uh, tobacco flavored e-liquid As you can see now, it produces a really nice amount of vapour. Obviously you have to bear in mind that um, vapour production is going to be sort of dependent on what atomizer you're using, what cartomizer you're using, whether you're using a low resistance or a standard resistance, so, you know, vaping at the 3.6 volts or, or the 6 volts. But all I can say is that I've been using it with a Bogue uh, low resistance 510 atomizer and it really does uh, chuck out the vapour. And flavour-wise, you know, it's excellent for flavour, the, uh, the Bogue cartomizers, highly recommend those. Um, throw it, again, 
it is going to be dependent on what sort of uh, e-liquid you're using, what atomizer you're using. Uh, like I said, I'm vaping the 18 milligram strength, and I personally find that the higher the nicotine content of the e-liquid, and like the stronger or the harsher the throat hit. And 18 milligrams, it's not too high, it's not too low, it's pretty much right there in the middle, and that's to give me a really nice, uh, strong kick in the back of the throat. The, um, the battery life on it, like I said, I've been using it with one of those uh, 16340 880 milliamp hour batteries. And you know, one of those batteries is last me the full day plus a little bit extra as well. And they take a few hours to sort of fully charge, but nevertheless, so you are getting like a full day's worth of use out of it. I would class myself as like a, a moderate vapor. Also, if you're a very heavy vapor, you're going to be sort of caning it all day long. You know, it's not going to leave your mouth. Then it's not, you're not going to get a full day out of it. I would have thought even like a really really heavy vapor, you're probably still going to get a good sort of three to four sort of you no know, solid hours uh, of use out of it. So it's still pretty good really. The uh, the switch on it, you know, it's um it's a nice switch. It's in a slightly awkward position. Some people might sort of prefer it there so they can operate it with the thumb, but you know you do get used to it quite quickly. You know, it's, um, it's no problem at all. Obviously, there's no sort of main on-off switch to the uh, device. Uh, so, it could go off in your pocket, but because it's positioned on top, if it's fitting in your pocket, unless you've got something actually sort of resting down on top of it, then you should be sort of pretty safe. Uh, but, you know, it works. You know, you press a button and it activates every time. Not had any sort of like misfires or anything like that. And it is a nice big button, so it's not going to sort of dig into your finger. It's just nice and, uh, nice and comfortable to use. I've got some stray cat outside my door just looking at me now, <laughs> distracting me. Overall, you know, for me, I think it's a fantastic little device. Uh, it's been very well made. Uh, like the guy first sent me a prototype around probably two to three months ago now, and I was quite impressed with that. I mean, like, as a prototype, you know, you could have probably quite easily have just put that straight on sale as it was. Uh, but you know, he said he wanted to sort of perfect it and he asked for a few sort of um, suggestions and I made a couple. And um, you know, he's added the uh, like, uh, the uh, the vent holes there. He's added that bit at the bottom because the prototype one, like the base was sort of moving about a bit slightly. So he's added that little sort of, uh, sort of oblong sort of piece of uh, brass there to stop it spinning. So it's, it's locked in there really nice and firmly now. And he added the brass ring around the, um, around the button. And you know, like, like I said, it's crafted very well. Even like the the, uh, the brass, the wood, everything about it is very nice. Uh, only slight sort of negative is that if you've got somebody who's got you know quite sore fingers or not not got sort of it's the word uh, dexterity in their fingers, you might struggle a little bit to undo the um, uh, like the uh, the bolt which obviously secures the base in place. Uh, but you know, it's again, it's not that hard. It does all sort of slot together really nice and easily. And uh, you know, just need to apply, apply, apply a little bit of pressure, and then just uh, screw it out tight, and job's done. You know, but overall, you know, for me, I think it's a uh, thing. It's a great little device. Uh, for looks, um, I think it looks fantastic. It really is, uh, really is a nice piece. And um, I'm going to give that a nine out of ten. Uh, for the vapor production, obviously, it does come down to sort of uh, what atomizer you're using, whether you're using VG liquid or PG liquid. So I will give it my sort of average score of eight out of ten. Uh, the throw here, again, I'm going to give that my average score of 8 out of 10 because, again, it depends on what sort of uh, uh, nicotine strength you're using, what liquid, what atomizer, what voltage. Uh, for the uh, the battery life, uh, like I said, when I'm using it with the 16340, I'm getting a full day's worth of use out of it. So if a battery lasts me the full day, I'm more than happy with that. So that would be another 8 out of 10. Uh, for the uh, the switch performance, no, the switch works perfectly fine. It's nice and comfy to use. It is positioned on the top, so it should eliminate that problem of anything sort of pressing against it. But nevertheless, there isn't that main on on off switch. I will get knock a couple of marks off, but it's still going to be another eight out of ten. Though uh, overall, it's just a, a very nice device. If you like your wooden devices and something that's made, you know, extremely well, then um, I'm sure you'd absolutely love this. So if you fancy trying out for yourself, go along to www. 
www.touchwood-esigs.com. Thank you very much for watching. Also, come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.